Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam and today I'm doing my birthday and Christmas book haul. So I'm actually wearing one of my birthday presents at the moment, which I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. It's a jumper that my mum got me, which says established 1990 because that was the year I was born and she thought she was being funny. So if you ever wonder where I get my amazing sense of humour from, it's not from my mum. <laughs> so yeah, it was both my birthday and Christmas in December, obviously, because Christmas is in December. And I got quite a few books. And so I thought I'd just make a quick video showing you what I got. A few of these were actually sent to me by other booktubers from my Amazon wish list. And so I thought I'd start with those first. And the first book I'm gonna talk about is Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, which was very kindly sent to me by Helen from Helen's Book Haven. So thank you, Helen, for sending this to me. I am so excited for this because I read the first book in this series earlier in 2020. It's called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I have on my shelf. So this is the first book in the series and I really enjoyed this. It's not my usual genre. I don't read a lot of YA contemporary or YA mysteries, but I was really surprised by how much I enjoyed this. So this first book in the series follows a 17 year old girl called Pippa and she lives in this town where a couple of years ago another girl that was a few years ahead of her in school went missing and the police thought that it was an open and shut case and they charged this girl's boyfriend for her murder even though a body was never found but Pippa has always suspected that there was more to the case than meets the eye and so for her final year school project she starts to investigate and ends up uncovering some secrets. That's pretty much all I can say because this is a mystery and I feel like with mysteries it's better to go in not knowing too much but this was so fun and the plot was really interesting. It was quite fast paced. I know that I read it quite quickly and there was quite a few surprises that I didn't see coming and also I really liked the main character Pippa. I thought she was really fun to read about. I thought she was really clever and just the way that she was portrayed I thought she came across really well. I don't actually know much about the second book I think it's set a few months or maybe even a year after the first book and we're still following Pippa who's now set up a true crime podcast and I think that there's another mystery that needs to be solved. I think someone goes missing and so it's following her as she again starts to investigate when the police can't do anything. But yeah, I don't think I want to know much more than that because like I said, I enjoy going into mysteries and discovering what's going on for myself. Uh, but thanks again, Helen, for sending this to me. I am so excited. I've been wanting to read this since I read the first book and so hopefully I can get around to it in the new year. I've also just realised that that's the only contemporary that I've got in this haul. The rest are all fancy books, so yeah. <laughs> so these next two books were sent to me by Abby from Autumn of Pelennor and I am so excited for this book because I have never read any books by V. Schwab before but I know that she's an author that a lot of people love and this series in particular has really appealed to me. So A Darker Shade of Magic is the first book in a trilogy and it follows a guy called Kel who has this ability to travel in between these different Londons. I think there's basically four different parallel Londons grey, black, white and red. Is that right? And yeah, I think this main character, Kel, is basically a smuggler. So he can move objects from one type of London to another, like he can move between worlds. One of the main reasons why I really want to get into V. Schwab's books is because I've heard she's really good at world building. And I love that in fantasy. I love worlds that feel very detailed and that feel very immersive. So yeah, really excited for this. And also the cover is really cool. <laughs> this next book was also very kindly sent to me by Abby. And I am so excited for this, most of all because look at it I know I'm like a child but I love floppy paperbacks because they are just so easy to read and this is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabata here and I have heard quite a lot about this book this is another fantasy series that I think is inspired by ancient Rome and in this world you have an empire and this empire is horrible from what I gather and anyone that defies this empire is executed and is killed from what I gather from the back this follows a girl called Leia who is a slave and her brother has been arrested by the Empire for being a rebel and so she meets up with this rebel alliance, no that's Star Wars, she meets up with these rebels and agrees to become a spy for them and she enters into this military academy where she meets this soldier called Elias and I'm not really sure what happens after that but this sounds so interesting because I don't think I've read a book like this before and I know that this is the first book in a series. I've also heard that it's really fast paced and so yeah really looking forward to getting stuck into this. The next book I'm going to talk about is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo which my mum got me 
this and I am so excited to finally read this because I read the first five books in the Grishaverse or Grishaverse? Grishaverse? I never actually know how to say that but I read the first five books in the Grishaverse earlier in 2020. I read the Shadow and Bone trilogy, loved it, finished it in like a weekend and then straight away went out and downloaded Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom because I was obsessed. The Grishaverse is basically this magical world where you have Grisha who can control different types of magic and there's different lands within this world that are based on certain countries so Shadow and Bone and I'm assuming this book mostly take place in a country called Ravka which is very loosely inspired by Russia. I don't actually know a lot about the plot of this book all I really know is that it follows a side character from the original trilogy and I don't want to say which character because I didn't know much about Shadow and Bone or the Shadow and Bone trilogy when I started reading it and so when I got to the third book Ruin and Rising I spent most of that book convinced that this character was going to die and so I don't want to say that this book is about that character because then if you haven't read the trilogy then you'd know that they survive and so just trust me when I say that this character was probably one of my favourite characters from the original trilogy and so I'm really excited that they've now got their own book and I'm really excited to see where the story goes next especially because I think that there's another character from Six of Crows Nina who is also in this book who I think has her own subplot so yeah really excited to read this I'm planning to read it in March or April whenever the next book Rule of Wolves comes out I've actually pre-ordered that and so I'm hoping to get it the week that it's released and then I can read these back to back because I've heard that a lot of people have said the ending to this is going to leave me wanting to immediately go out and read the next book. So yeah, very excited to read this. These next three books were given to me by my sister and I had never actually heard of this trilogy before. I think it's an older series, but it's the Micah Gray trilogy by Laura Lamb. Oh, I can't hold them up there. <laughs> the first book in the series is Pantomime. And first of all, the cover is absolutely beautiful. And I'm pretty sure that my sister was saying this is recommended for people who like the night circus because as you can see it's kind of set in a circus from what I understand. I'm finding it really hard to describe what this book is about because I've not read it yet and I'd obviously not heard of it before but I did a little bit of research online and I think that the original synopsis of this book wasn't very good at explaining what this book is actually about. A lot of people complained about it because this original synopsis talked about how this is told from two different perspectives. You have Jean who is a debutante and whose parents are very very overbearing and very forceful with their views and then you also have a character called Micah who has run away from home and who has joined a circus and is training to be an aerialist but that's not the synopsis that I've got on this book. I think they made the decision to change it to make it more clear that Jean and Micah are the same person. They were born both male and female and are intersex and so what this book is actually about is how this main character runs away from home because their parents are trying to fix them even though they are quite happy with who they are. The plot of this sounds so interesting and I'm really hoping that I enjoy it because I do tend to like books that are set within a circus. It's also blurbed by Lee Bardugo on the front and so that also gives me high hopes um, so yeah, really looking forward to reading this. This next book is probably the most beautiful book that I have ever owned and that is the collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. This was given to me by my mum and honestly I almost cried when I saw it because it is so beautiful. If you've been following my channel for a while then you might know that I'm a big fan of Sarah J Mass's books but I don't actually own any of her books physically because I read them all on my Kindle. For anyone who doesn't know this follows a young woman called Feyre which I'm guessing this is her here on the cover and she's out hunting in the woods by her house one day because she lives with her family, her dad and her older sisters and even though she's the youngest she's expected to go out and hunt for food otherwise they would starve and so one day she's out hunting in these woods when she comes across a wolf and she kills this wolf but it turns out that this wolf is actually a fairy and as punishment she has to go and live in the fairy kingdom. There's also a mysterious curse that has affected the fae that she's living with but it's a fantasy romance and so there is also a very strong romance in this book. If you like fantasy romance and you haven't read this series yet then I would definitely recommend it. I was a little apprehensive going into it mainly because of the hype and how so many people love this series and I thought there's no way, there's no way that it's that good but 
it is that good in my opinion anyway i absolutely love this series it's one of my favorite fantasy romance series if not my favorite fantasy romance series and i'm so excited to own the special edition i don't actually know do the other books come as well in this collector's edition because that would be amazing. <laughs> so the final books I'm going to talk about are within the same theme because for Christmas my mum got me the entire Throne of Glass box set which is also by Sarah J Maas. Okay I'm going to put this down because it's heavy. This series absolutely terrifies me mainly because it's eight books long and that's a pretty big commitment but also because I loved the A Court of Thorns and Roses series so so much I'm worried that this just isn't going to live up to the hype but I am hoping that because my expectations are that little bit lower maybe I will end up really really enjoying this. My sister actually commented on one of my videos recently saying that she's read this series or she's read the first two or three books and really enjoyed them so I am really excited to see what I think about these. I don't actually know a lot about what this series is about. You know where you hear a synopsis for a book or for a series so many times that you kind of just don't really know how to explain it but from what I understand this is about a young woman called Selena who is an assassin and I think she's recruited to take part in this competition to become the next royal assassin. And I'm assuming that because it's Sarah J Maas that there's some kind of romance involved, but I am really looking forward to eventually reading this. I am nervous, but I'm also excited. So I think it's like nervous excitement, if that makes sense. I'm also really confused what order I'm meant to read these books because I was under the impression that Throne of Glass was the first book in the series because it was published first from what I understand. And so I was gonna read this first, but the way that the box set is organized, it's almost like it's implying that The Assassin's Blade is the first book in the series. I think, I don't know a lot about this book, but I think these are, yeah, novellas. I think these are prequels. And so I don't know whether it makes sense to read these first, even though this was published after Throne of Glass. Am I right? And so would it not make sense to read this first and then go back and read these? I'm really confused. So if you've read this series, then please let me know what's best to do because I'm happy to read The Assassin's Blade first if that's gonna be better, but I'm just, yeah, really confused. <laughs> Okay, so that brings me to the end of the video. Thanks for watching if you've made it this far. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this haul, then please let me know in the comments what you thought of them. Let me know if you think there's any that I should prioritise and read first. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>